Hey everybody, welcome to Obscurities and Miniatures. We're back, it's a Friday, and that means it's time for more Obscurities in Literature. Whether you want it or not, I don't care, I'm going to do it anyway. So today we have a book by an artist that really had a big impact on me in my late formative teen years, and that is Yasushi Nirasawa. Nirasawa did a lot of stuff in a lot of places, and this book, which was published unfortunately after he died, he did die tragically young, he was only in his mid-40s if I remember correctly, but this collects a lot, not everything, but a lot of his monster designs, and that's what really has always struck me with Nirasawa, just his crazy designs. And the dude was absolutely prolific, did a lot in the 90s and early 2000s, and this is just kind of the sum of some of his results. So I gotta be careful with this because there's all sorts of questionable material, and we will we'll try to limit that. So yeah, he was famous for lots of girly pinups, uh, Guillotina being one of his main ladies that he did a lot of work on but he also did an absolute ton of just crazy black and white ink drawings and did publish a few original comics phantom core being one of them and i have hunted for it for years and have yet to come across a relatively decent priced copy so yeah guillotina being his major character that has shown up over the years I first came across Nirasawa, I believe, in mid-90s volumes of Hobby Japan. That's where a lot of his work first surfaced. That's where I became familiar with him. And I know he did branch out, but just all kinds of just crazy designs. And that's what he did a lot of, was concept artwork. Especially of just monsters. And I mean, if there was ever a book that... A sculptor wanted to plumb the depths of interesting, crazy, and bizarre designs. This is a place to do it. A lot of his designs also ended up as toys and models. If you collected any of the future action figures based on Devilman, these may seem kind of familiar to you. Now, I know a lot of these did not actually get designs. I don't remember ever seeing a Psycho Jenny model, but I know Amon and... What's his name? I don't think Mal Dante ever got an actual figure made. But again, just various Nagai artwork and creatures. I know that these were actually published. The Mazinga 1901 designs. I believe Future did those, and I believe they had all kinds of quality control issues. One of the things that Nirasawa was most well known for was his tokusatsu superhero action Saturday morning costume designs. So, most of these, I believe, are from Blade. I believe there were some Den-O designs in here as well. And again, just Kabuto. Kabuto was what I was thinking of, too. You can see just tons and tons of design work. Oh, yeah. Den-O absolutely was in here. Was in my imagination. And again, if you ever get a chance to look through, one of, the, one of my Holy Grail books is the Metal Hero Design Works, where they took all this kind of artwork of all the various suit designs for the weekly creatures and kind of compiled everything. There's just a lot of stuff that's worth checking out. Now, that looks like Mikazuki. No, these are Kaider SICs. I don't know if they even make SICs. Super Imaginative Chogokin, which were their McFarlane-styled action figures from Bandai. That is absolutely from Mikazuki, which was... I found it quite entertaining, the watermelon monster. Oh, Garo. We might remember Garo. Hyper Midnight Action Violence TV show. Again, just very interesting and unique designs. Very much into the asymmetric look of a lot of this stuff. Local... Kaiju costume designs. Just funny, Nirasawa being from Niigata, which is where my wife's family was originally from, and always likes to rep it whenever she has the chance. I believe they did make models of Gilstern here. Gilstein, sorry. I want to say some of this stuff. Oh. Yeah, so uh, Nirasawa was responsible for some of the Gaigan designs for Final Wars, and uh, oh, what was this called? Yokai Dyson Soul? 
I believe, the Takashimike Yokai movie. Which, if you've seen it, it's absolutely unsurprising that this guy was doing the designs of the monsters in that. They were weird. And it was vaguely a family slash children's movie, but it was absolutely disturbing and I absolutely loved it. Yeah, I don't think Diamond ever ended up in the movie. I know mean, he was from the old yokai movies from uh, the Dae that made those. I don't even remember now. It was whatever the movie studio that made the Gamera stuff. So another interesting thing is that Nirosawa was involved in a lot of game design as well. A couple of these I actually am familiar with. Uh, Beast Warriors. I believe this was a Sega Genesis game that was called Beast Wrestler or something like that in the U.S., and if you ever see the cover, it's got like kind of a model look to it. I think he actually did the design for those as well. So just an interesting nugget of information there. DNA combined. I don't remember that at all. I don't think that stuff was actually in the game. Beyond Zero Tolerance. Not a game that sounds familiar to me. I've got models in the way here. Again, like I said, if an artist ever wanted to plumb the depths of interesting looking monster designs, I would absolutely go looking around in here. Guy came up with some interesting stuff. And literally that's all this book is, is nothing but monster designs. This is from some sort of RPG. I'm not sure which, though. Bug monsters. And still getting all kinds of stuff. And I guess, honestly, that's kind of the one downside of this book, is that some of the artwork is so tiny, and it's, like, so obscure and narrowly focused that I don't know where else some of this could ever, again, resurface. But it's cool just to have it, nonetheless. If any of you guys can identify where this stuff comes from, I'm not seeing a title anywhere. Cyberdoll. The name sounds familiar. It doesn't look familiar, but that absolutely looks like Joker and Harlequin. Long tongue. Okay, well, tomato, tomato, right? And some very unique designs. Enemy Zero. That sounds familiar, but I don't know why. And lots of asymmetric stuff. General weirdness. Adam Poots would be proud. This is one of those books I like to pull off the shelf every now and then just to dig through and check out some of the stuff because there's always something I didn't see before. Deep Fear. Deep Fear, was that a PS2 game? Maybe it was PS1. I remember my brother playing it at one point, I think. Maybe not. I don't know. Some of this looks familiar, some of it doesn't. Mutant wannabe William Birkins. I know it was a Resident Evil knockoff. And then we come to Volfoss. Now, Volfoss, I don't think ever got released outside of Japan. And if it did, I would be absolutely shocked. And I actually tracked down a copy and purchased it. Dirt cheap, some point in the early 2000s and it was absolutely an awful game unfortunately and I bought it just because of the Nirasawa artwork uh, it was a three quarters view top down isometric strategy game and it was slow and clunky and I did not enjoy it but the art and the designs were right up my alley I think that looks familiar too I don't know why but yes, he designed everything in the game, from my understanding. All creatures. Okay. At some point or another, we start coming into Shin Megami Tensei stuff. And I don't remember where. I know there's some in here. Just general weirdness. boss from Bullet Witch along with one of the guns 
broomsticks. Dark Summoner sounds familiar. Looks kind of familiar. It doesn't ring a bell though. More random monsters. Oh yeah, I thought there was some Magami Tensei stuff in here. I don't know if I ever played 4 though. Is that the one on the PS2, 3? I don't remember. These are interesting. These are actually Monster Hunter designs for Monster Hunter Z, which was the online only in Japan game. I don't think we ever saw that. Random artwork for Lord of Vermilion cards. I have yet to see. No, I take that back. I did see it in an arcade once. Once upon a time. And then we get into even more crazy random fantasy monsters. Now his comic work. Funny enough, I think my first outside of Hobby Japan, and I finally put two and two together, who Nirasawa was, was his comic work with Bastard here. I don't know if you guys are familiar with Bastard. Unfortunately, it kind of went off the deep end big time, although it was already off the deep end to begin with. Um, but the artwork, he did a bunch of demon designs in it, and the artwork was just absolutely incredibly detailed, especially for a time when a lot of artists, when this was first coming out, really didn't use a lot of screen tone, didn't use a, well, as heavy of amount of screen tone as Kazuishi Hagiwara here. And I know a lot of this was also being done on the computer as well. It was just something new. And unfortunately it's taken like a million years since he's actually released anything. It's been a while, but yeah, just if you're into apocalyptic end of the world type stuff, you, you really can't go wrong with this. Well, you can, because there's all kinds of just pointless, trashy sex scenes in it that really serve no purpose other than the fact that they wanted to draw porn. I mean, honestly and truly, there's there's stuff in here that just it really scratches the head as to why it exists in this comic, but it is what it is. Like I said, just lots of crazy detail. As they end the world. And the sad thing is, it's still not done. I'm getting totally off track, but yeah, I really liked Bastard. That was one of my favorite comics. I think I first discovered that in high school. It was about halfway through its run at the time. Monsters, monsters, common riders, toy designs. Again, if you ever looked at a Hobby Japan in the mid-90s, you probably came across this guy's work. Marilyn Manson toys, Dark Wingman, if you're familiar with, uh, oh gosh, I totally forgot the guy's name. The guy did Zetman and DNA Squared and Tarada? I think it's Tarada, I don't know. My son's favorite part. Now, it's funny is, the art and the designs of these Ultraman Kaiju look totally different. Just, I guess it's the line art. It looks so drastically different. Ultraman, Gomera, Teresadon, Dorako, Kimura Seijin, Metron Seijin. Yeah, we are absolutely an Ultraman family. And again, just more, and more, and more. When we get to the back, there's all these old drawings he did. And I don't want to show you everything, because I want you to enjoy some of this and discover it on your own illustrations. With spot illustrations for young adult novels, and here I gotta point this out. One of the things, one of my biggest regrets, is this top book right here, Fantastic Creature World, one of his very first books. I actually found a copy of it, signed and had a sketch in the interior by him, and well, I ended up selling it for a nice chunk of money, but it was a monster manual type book of nothing but his crazy original art. And that's why I say not everything's in this. There is absolutely a ton of stuff. Um, there are bookfuls of nothing but his... What's it called? The Common Rider stuff that he did. There's Devil Man stuff. Uh, I want to say a bunch of his artworks are in the Garo books. Phantom Core here. Someday I'm going to own you. That's his manga that he did yeah there's actually a good output of 
folks out there. And unfortunately, like I said, his life did end way too prematurely because the guy had a lot of talent, did a lot of stuff, and who knows if he'd still been around, what kind of stuff he would have been coming up with. This book actually came out in 2017. It did take me a while to get a hold of it. All of the bookstores local to my in-laws, nobody carried it. Um, and I think I finally just had to cave in and order it on Amazon Japan and ship it over there because it just it was impossible to find. Um, so if you're interested, Blood of Nirasawa's sorry, not Nirasawa's Blood of Nira's Creatures is what you want to look for. Um, I know there's copies out there, and you're probably going to pay up the butt on places like eBay. But you know, if you've got a connection, especially overseas in Japan, you know, hit them up on it. This guy's stuff really cool and. Hopefully it will inspire some people to get out there and make some monsters like this, because that would make me happy. Anyways, with that said, this has been High Lord Tamerlane with Obscurities and Miniatures, saying thanks for watching, and we'll see you back here soon. Bye-bye.